Hello, welcome back to the Last Shot Podcast with me, All Things Wrestling, Stefan, and special guest this week, Alex Kingdom. Hi, thank you for having me. This is this is incredible. It's, it's good. We'd like to have you here. You're welcome. Exactly. Uh, we have a lot to discuss, uh, obviously with it being like five shows this week, or six, <laughs> just bloody mental amount of wrestling shows going on. Let's just do ratings for the usual weekly shows. Raw was up by a bit, like just over a hundred thousand. So good for Raw. The show wasn't bad for Raw, I don't think. It was an average Raw. What was the viewers? Sorry, what the viewers? Uh, two point one. They got two point zero last week. That's bad, though, isn't it? I mean, obviously, I've not, I've not obviously been around for a while, but that's bad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's. Dread like I mean, we can talk about it going up if you want to. We can talk about positively that way, but I think in the long run it's quite worrying, you know. But unfortunately, like, they get the uh, get loads of stuff from YouTube and everything. So television ratings don't know, mean I, anything I, near compared to what I, they I, were. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's the issue. I mean, I'll go we'll go into it. We actually are we going to talk about raw? We're just talking about ratings. Uh, um, talk about raw yeah. while we're at this point. Uh, I don't. I, I don't feel bad for them. That's the thing. If ratings are down, I don't care uh, because I love the company. And the thing is, if the ratings are down, it will force them to change sooner or, or you know sooner or later. It, they need to change something. Uh, yeah. You know? So if we say that, opinion. however, we are getting that Saudi Arabia money. So let's be worried. Yeah, um, Fox money, no, Saudi think, money, just so much money. I think yeah. the issue is that you said they're getting the, the views of YouTube. Yeah. That's why they click to YouTube because you can watch the three-minute segments and you don't miss anything. Exactly. Like, I, well, I've been keeping up with what's going on and I haven't watched Raw in about five months. And even yeah. then, the last time I watched Raw, I fast-forward through it. So exactly, they, they have a they have a massive issue, and I don't want to be the guy. It's like I love AEW, but the difference with AEW is that's must see. Like you feel yeah. something happens every week. Whereas the episode of Raw, you're just like, so Rusev's complaining at Lana again. Which, by the way, I'm yeah. sorry to go on tangent, but can I talk about that? Because that is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, bro, I'm yeah. literally ga- yeah. I'm literally gaming during Raw, so if that doesn't say anything about the product. Uh, I mean, you know, you watch some things, you don't watch other things. It's not, it's it doesn't have the feeling like that every segment is important. It's not. Oh God, no, absolutely. And I want the cliffhanger at the end. That's the most important thing. To uh, for you to uh, you know to make you um, to wait for in. the next weeks to see what was what's, what's going to happen, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I think I think the bigger issue is so let's look at this uh, Rusev and Lashley and Lance, which I don't think is horrible. I you know no, it's because not, I'm it's okay, not awful. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with cheesy stuff. I don't mind if there's a romance. The issue is is that why are they doing a segment with Jerry the King? No one cares. Second of all, like like the bits where uh, Rusev was like, you can have Lana, but Bobby Lashley, I'm going to beat you up. That's really cool. But when we're seeing Lana get a massage and she's like, I want it deeper and harder. It's like, yeah, we get it. It's not edgy enough for teenagers. And it's it's too, you know, it's too, obviously, too blind for kids to pick up on it. So who is it for? Yeah. Can I give my opinion on this? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I honestly think... In 2019, these storylines can't work like back in the day. No. Because fans are not stupid. Uh, fan, it's 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 ridiculous. It's cringe. It's hilarious. Okay, it's not not hilarious in a good way. It's so bad that it's hilarious. And they are trying kind of to be actually, but they can't go full action. So it's just ridiculous that they're even trying this. Well, and, so, and... It's 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 annoying because Lana's being treated like an idiot. Like I saw the segment. When she was like, Rusev wanted to put a baby in me. Well, yeah, but you yeah. married him. You, 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 you know, you're not dating anymore. Married. This like, is kind of logical people... choices in life. You start know, a family. I know that yeah. she's a heel, but she could have been a heel if she was his girlfriend. And like, I don't want a kid because I want to. Like that would have kind of made sense. You know, that's why she's annoyed at Rusev. She, she's not ready to commit yet. It makes her a heel for now, but I mean, she can grow later on when she's. Yeah. Proves that she she loves Rusev. That would have been a good story. Yes, it would have been a bit, you know, a bit. You could have told what was going to happen, but that is a good story. His girlfriend being scared of commitment, 
goes to something like Bobby Lashley, but then she sees her boyfriend get beaten up and beaten up and beaten up, so she can't take it anymore, and she realizes that she loves him anyway. That's, yeah, is it a bit cringy? Probably. But it's better than Rusev wanted sex with me and wants a kid because we got married. It's like... Yeah. And then she's yeah. just lying that she's pregnant and that he's a sex addict. It's just... It's inconsistent to start with and what the hell they're like, doing with it. Like, what do you think of my pitch of if they if if, if it was if they weren't married and she was a girlfriend but she was worried about commit that would be a better story, right? Oh yeah. She grows up to love Rusev and you see like that that's good but where does this go? She just falls in love with Rusev and now wants a kid? Like we're like we're, no offense, we're not gonna see the end product of that. It doesn't end anywhere for the viewer. Because this is a baby, big whoop. Where's the big story end? You just, then you just fall back for Bobby Lashley because, you know, Bobby has just been kind of he's been left. <laughs> like it's 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 a strange story, and like I'm gonna I know we should probably mention this later on, but I'm gonna talk about so the CM Punk said. Like I don't think the product is horrible, okay? Yeah. But the issue is, is that I it's not good enough in a watch week to week. It could be so much better. It's just boring and repetitive. And I think the issue yeah. is, I'm sorry for talking over you guys so much, but like, and I'm not going to say that AEW is perfect, because it is No, they're not perfect. Improve. I'm very they critical for AEW. We know you are. They could, all, they could all improve. However, the thing about yeah, AEW yeah. is, and I get this is just a sign of the time, but it's fresh, it's new, and it has a different style. Will that get boring eventually? Probably. But, but for it, now, it's also not okay. competitive, oh, and it yeah. also okay. makes you want see? to watch. Okay. okay, here's the deal. I've been critical of AW. They're doing some stuff that are okay. They have great quality matches, but obviously there's some bad stuff, which is expected. It's new company, okay? So, the thing with AW is they have cons consistency from the first week until now. Every segment is connected. Every segment makes sense. What happened last week is happening. It's it's a continuation. We don't have that in the WWE, and that's a big problem. No, and also right, and this is just the proof again. But I don't want to. I don't want in the comments Alex as a W Mark because I'm not. But they made a celebrity segment really. They made a Rick and Morty themed episode really good. <laughs> they actually did. Because, no, but that's the difference. Because first of all, AW respect their audience. Yeah. Because they know that they want that, like fifteen to. 25 demographic. Which WWE we know that most of their viewers are 18 to 25, but they're catering to kids, and that's fine. But there needs to be some segments that are for our, our age. I think that's what they're missing, and I think that's the big difference with AW because they are not catering to that younger audience. There's none of those segments that make us go, oh. But even if AW decides we're going to go PG, they they would still keep some of those segments that are a bit more edgy. They have those wrestlers like Moxley and Omega and Pac, they let do what they want. Whereas the WWE is so, not, I suppose, yeah, they censor their wrestlers to the point where you just can't, like, you feel like they could do so much more, but they're not allowed to. Exactly, they but there, never feel like there is an issue yet. Because, believe it or not, and you, Tom, you probably know about this, it's, you know, it's depressing, but man, we are actually a minority. And the whole story, you, you know, uh, we, there is more casual fans than there is us hardcore fans. So the thing is that, like you said, they're catering to those people and they're bringing in the ratings and money. That's the thing. That's the issue. Uh, if someone tells you, oh, here is Pete Dunne against, let's say, uh, you know, uh, Pete Dunne against Keith Lee, Keith nobody's going to watch that match. Nobody's going to watch that match. But if you say uh, Pete Dunne against Seth Rollins, oh, everyone is going to watch that match because it's Seth Rollins is the match. So they don't know I who... Uh... I disagree. I disagree, actually, with you, Stefan. I'm not being very rude. But I think the issue with that is, and your point is, in, in one way, correct. But people would watch a Pete Dunne and Keith Lee match. Obviously. But what, what do we know about Pete Dunne and Keith Lee? Nothing. I, 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 that's my thing. That's what I wanted to say. Is I didn't finish. Uh, they don't want to turn in to watch NXT. And that's a big issue for a lot of casual fans. They think NXT is just a developmental territory. They don't take NXT seriously. They think NXT is a joke. And that's why exactly why after when we come to the Survivor Series, that's why I, what I have to say later on. But I just don't think the casual fans care about NXT. Because NXT yeah. isn't for the casual fans. 
NXT has mm. always been a hardcore fan brand. Yeah. Same with AEW. I, I, Both of those two brands cater to the hardcore fans, not the casual wrestling fans. Yeah, and that's why their ratings are lower, you know, because all other fans are casual. No, well, I'm not worried about the ratings in terms of numbers. I think we really, what we need to focus on first is get the product good. And I, I can literally, you can name someone on the AEW roster and they have some sort of character. Even there's a guy called Orange Cassidy who just wears a denim jacket, and I know a lot about him. He is amazing. I don't know anything about Jonathan Dijakovic, or I don't know anything about, you know, we could go back in the day when NXT was really good. You had Tyler Breeze, who was this, you know, he was this fashionista. You had Sami Zayn, who was the kid that would never give up. You know, you had The Ascension back in NXT. They were good kids, oh, believe me. Um, yeah. You know, but, and nowadays, everything's so sanitized. Like, if uh, if I Rollins came out this year, I would not know a thing about Seth Rollins. The fact that he's a complete cunt. Excuse my language, I don't know if I'm allowed to He, he yeah, doesn't he have sorry. a gimmick, bro. He doesn't have a yeah. gimmick. His gimmick is burn it down. It's cringe. Yeah. Oh, God, every, screw burn it down. In everyone in AW might not have a gimmick, so to speak, but they have a character. Like yeah. Sammy Guevara. He's the guy that... You know, he's a young upstart that wants to impress Chris Jericho. We know that about him. What do we know about, say for example, on the main roster, um, Cedric Alexander? Incredible okay. wrestler. Incredible wrestler. Absolutely no personality or character on him. That's the problem with no. WWE. No. As, as we've said over the last few weeks, WWE just don't have character for the for them anymore. Seth exactly. Rollins doesn't have a character. No. The stuff really doesn't race. really have I mean, a character. What, what, what's the Roman Reigns character? Is he the big dog? Is that his he's literally, character? Literally, that's it. He's, he's the big okay, dog. Okay. Like, let's talk about the guys that are actually really good and we care about WWE. The Fiend. Incredible. Oh, The Fiend is amazing. Yeah. Brian. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. And we love him now because of his new character. Yeah. You know, you've got, you know, who else? The Miz, I guess. Yeah. He's still cool. Ray Mysterio. He's got a son. We love him. Um... I kind of like what Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura do. Yeah, Kevin I'm... Owens. But, but, but I'm struggling to name names. As an AW, I could talk about Cody, The Bucks, Omega, Neville. Pac. But you see, um, that's that's not their fault. It's yeah, WWE's fault. Yeah. Keep this no, in no, mind. No, they managed not, to kill. Me. They managed to kill Bobby Roode. If I'm they not, managed to kill him, what do you expect? I'm not. Well, I don't. I'm not blaming the wrestlers. I'm blaming the writing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the issue is, is that the AW writers, Cody, the Bucks, because yes, they write it, but they know wrestling. Whereas the writers that WWE hire, don't they have a Hollywood writer. Well, it's not just the Bucks and Cody that write it. It's also the wrestlers themselves that are in control of part of what yeah. happens. So that's what you need. That talent, in talent, putting their input into it is what makes wrestling good. Exactly. A lot of talent are geniuses. Look at Chris Jericho. He would f he would be nowhere near as good if WWE just put him in a generic tag team with, say, uh, Sami Zayn. He could probably make it work because it's Chris Jericho, but you, you need to be able to have freedom to create a good character, which is what The yeah. Fiend is. The Fiend created himself, and it's the best thing on WWE TV. But let's like be realistic. If Jericho the, was still in the WWE, he will still have a list gimmick. Yeah. The issue, the yeah. issue with NXT is, and I know the rest of the quality is grandissimo, uh, <laughs> but the the actual characters have been way back. Like you know, even even back in the day, you had C.J. Parker, who yes was crap, but he had a character. You had Mojo Rawley with this hype man. What is he now? He's just a guy that looks in the mirror. But the yeah. thing is, the guy that looked in the mirror was intriguing, but they just canned it after two weeks. It, it, it's it's frustrating. I don't want to say that we are just saying that AEW is perfect. Cause that's how the it's definitely not perfect, but it is probably one of the most entertaining wrestling products going out right now. Yeah. I mean, I would have said NWA Power, but we'll get into that in a bit. Um, <laughs> um, but it, it's so difficult to watch WWE because you don't invest in anyone anymore. The wrestling no. content, is it good? Yes. But who do I want to win? I don't... Like, I remember back in 2014 when Daniel Bryan was facing the authority. 
and I was a 13 year old kid and I wanted Daniel Bryan to win through and wrong. Yeah. Nowadays, if I was 13, I'd be like, oh. why do I want The Fiend to beat Seth Rollins? Because yeah. The Fiend is cool. Exactly. Daniel yeah. Bryan is cool. Like, if we go into <laughs> AW, Moxley, he's amazing. He's got this character. Omega's cool. The Lucha Brothers are cool. SCU, they have tag teams that have personality. Who do we have in the WWE? Have uh, Hawkins and Ryder. Yeah, we love that Ryder, but that was eight years ago. Yeah, and they haven't done anything <laughs> decent with him since then. It's like, if you could get your ta- like, let's speak about the women. In terms of wrestling quality, do it. Do WWE have the better? Yes, they have the better roster. But, but... Becky Lynch has done the same thing for a year and a half. I love Becky Lynch. The problem is they've only got about four good women. That's I agree the with problem. You. I, 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 I agree with you. I'm and sick AW, of Becky Lynch. AW have a really good set of women. Um, yeah, but, they need to learn. They need to showcase it a bit more. I think that one. But WWE have so many shit women that are just taking up space. Like, like who the Dana fuck Brooke. wants to see Dana Brooke wrestle or Lacey Evans? They're shit. Okay, Lacey's, Lacey's improved. I'll give Lacey. She's that. improved, but she's still not good. But like, yeah, Brooke is horrible. Let's, let's talk about the guy. So, right, Becky has been the man for a year and a half. Is she, do I still love Becky Lynch? Absolutely. She's incredible when she comes out. But she but dropped a lot she, of the personality of that. I know, and also I know what she's going to say every time. thing is, it doesn't help that she's dropped a lot of that bad person attitude now. She's basically <laughs> just generic. Because she's so stressed at looking at Seth Rollins and Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Probably. Can, can I give you my opinion. I think Rhea Ripley is more more demand than Becky Lynch. Yeah, definitely. No, I, 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 just, I don't think Rhea Ripley has the man character. Because the man character is, I'm going to beat you up to her on the best. I don't think Rhea Ripley, Ripley would fit that character because she just wants to beat people up. But like, yeah, but she, thing she's, is, more, that... she's more like Stone Cold to the offer than Becky is now. Sure. Yeah, but yeah, I, just, she... I don't want to compare them. But you look at AEW. They've got their title feuds, but then you had they, um, you had B Priestley and Britt Baker. We're in a mid card feud in the women's division. It expands it. You had, you had uh, Austin awesome Kong and what's Cody Rhodes' wife? Brandy Rose. Brandy Rose. Yeah. They were together. You had, you still, you have a lot of interconnect, and that's beautiful. We never get that in. We get the tag belt. They, they, they've destroyed Asuka. Oh, okay, God, yeah. uh, can we do this? Can we talk about SmackDown and NXT and AW uh, ratings, whatever, and then at the end we'll continue with this uh, discussion of everything, whatever you want to talk about. Is that fine for you guys? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I like everything, dude. Whatever you said, I, I agree with you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, let's go to the NXT and AW ratings, and Stefan would like to discuss it. And for the first time NXT defeated AEW with a not mm-hmm. actually NXT NXT episode don't get used to it no I agree well to be fair it mm-hmm. the only reason I'd say NXT actually won is because they put loads of Raw and Smackdown wrestlers on there and also also yeah. as well the hype to survive the series they've done this thing of you don't know who's going to turn up but also they didn't destroy AEW. It's like 8,000 or something, isn't it? It's 20,000. In a way, that's very minimal, isn't it? Do you think yep. you must have been thinking they wanted more than 20k? Yeah. Okay. But here is my here. Are, okay. Say ratings for AEW. Okay. Uh, AEW still won on the adult demographic from okay. NXT, it's so good. that means more kids are turning into NXT than adults compared to AEW. Yeah. So. It shows surprised. what happened. Yeah. Okay, um, so I, here... I, 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 okay, I'll let Stefan talk. No, dude, uh, sorry. Uh, it just I have a, just to delay five seconds. Um, because... Um, what I was going to say is, is that you... I think the only reason the kids were tuning in this week is because they were like, let's see if Roman Reigns turns up. And that, I, like, I really like I'll be honest, I think he's really cool. I don't like, although yes, it's the leukemia thing, perhaps part of it. I don't care if a man can come back from leukemia and somehow not be as boring as he used to be. I don't love that. But mm-hmm. the issue with this is, is that NXT, WWE, they'll they won't market it as a win, but they'll 
you know, they'll look at that and they'll think the fans don't think that NXT is a dream. But when you look at it, twenty k, they would have been wanting at least a. Hmm. Exactly. Okay, so here is my point then. Uh, this whole Survivor Series, and this is uh, what I said before. Um, nobody cares about NXT. Casual fans don't care about NXT. Only we care about NXT, and we, we are unfortunately minority. So. What they needed to do with Survivor Series is bring in NXT to put the ice on the product, and it was perfect timing for Vince, and Vince knows that. So Vince probably thinks if we can get NXT on Survivor Series, more people will get, uh, you know, to know what is NXT and whatever, and they will they will tune in on Wednesdays. So I think that's the reason why ratings went up a little bit. Now next week when. You know, when you don't have Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins for NXT and Raw and SmackDown, the ratings will be down again. <laughs> so Yeah, I think definitely. Like, again, the issue is, it's nothing to do with the talent. And I, I don't know whether you guys agree with me, but there's too much talent in them to let them go. I know they won't, because they won't. I don't even think AEW would scoop half them up. I think AEW's got a solid group. Oh yeah, they definitely won't. They're not going to scoop every single person that leaves. No. But like, there's too many. Like, yeah. Bo Dallas would not be a job. No, he's good. In, so is Curtis in, Axel. In any way, should they... They should never be a jobber. You know, they are so good. But there's no space. Well, I can't say the Ascension are jobbers because they don't actually turn up. But, like... Uh, I think are they still employed? Good. Yep. I think, really, it's got to be... I think this is a win for AEW. I know the numbers don't show that, but I think they'll be pretty chuffed. Well, AEW's putting out a good it product is. and focusing on themselves, so people, people. It is. Hmm? It is a win. Exactly. So AEW's putting out a good product and they're focusing on themselves yeah. more than and WWE, on the competition. WWE is desperate. That's yes. the biggest issue with WWE compared to AEW. AEW, like you said, is putting on a great product. But WWE is desperate, and it's sad how much harder are they trying to, you speaking know, to of, beat the AW. Speaking of being desperate, should we talk about the SmackDown rating? Uh, yeah. Yes, they got a two hundred and fifty thousand viewer boost, and they got two point six million, which again is due to the Survivor Series build, not due to. Uh, th- to be fair, the show was trash. Yeah, and I, and it I, was. Reckon, I reckon as well, Fox will be scratching their heads. Because two point six million isn't even that good. That Fox are reportedly happy with the ratings again at the minute. Like, yeah, but I think in a while they'll be thinking if these don't go up, they're going to be like, um, you know, I think now they talk about all that down. Is it okay if I get in my conundrum with the title situation? Uh, just yeah. want to discuss uh before that backstage is ratings because I want to kind of comment on Seth Rollins okay. regarding this. They got one hundred eighty thousand viewers because it was CM Punk's first episode. Where the episode mm. where he critiqued WWE Creative because, yes, the guy's like, he can't even get fired by WWE because he doesn't work for WWE, so he can say whatever he wants about him. Yeah. And then Seth Rollins is begging for a match on Twitter. It said. I- I've got to say, Seth Rollins looks like a desperate little child trying to get his toy back right now, and it's just it's, sad. It's, it's sad. Really, it's ridiculous. Really sad. And he looks like a biggest loser, dude. He out, really out of this. does. Seth is killing his, killing himself as well on Twitter more than he's doing on WWE TV. And you know what's the best thing? You have those profile uh, people with profile pictures of Rollins and back connection. They're like, oh my God, Seth Rollins speaks his mind. He can say whatever he wants. Like, shut the fuck up. You're probably a ten year old kid hiding beca- behind the picture. Like, come on, dude. Like. Yeah, he, can say, he, he you know? can say what he wants, but he just looks like a <laughs> twat for saying it. My issue with Seth Rollins is I don't know why he does it. Um, because I think he thinks he's cool. But uh, It's also been reported that there is no plans to have CM Punk face Seth Rollins. Because, as no. I've pointed out enough times, WWE do not have a contract with Punk. And I don't think um, Punk will sign a contract to face Seth Rollins. No. And fuck... Fuck that! Even if that, uh, if even if you will be back in the WWE, that's not my fucking dream match. Okay, Fuck my man. dream match for Punk is Adam Cole. My dream match for Punk is Daniel Bryan. Okay, oh, Matt not Riddle, Seth Rollins. Okay, him, Matt, him, Matt Riddle be good. My yeah. dream match for Punk is Punk versus Baron Corbin. 
Oh, I, I thought maybe you were gonna say <laughs> Punk versus Punk. And no, Punk Corbin <laughs> Corbin in a retirement match. Punk retires, and uh, Baron Corbin retires CM Punk in two minutes. And oh Baron Jesus Corbin Christ! Becomes the biggest deal in the history of ever. I really like Baron. Corbin. I He's got really Baron Corbin has a lot of potential to be good. They're just killing him with the gimmick. Yes. Yeah. Um, WWE are just booking him really <laughs> shitly right now. I love the King gimmick. But it's just the way what he's it? doing it. It's just they're not making him look good with it. No, they're looking at him like a like a little kid. Literally, it's it's hilarious. Okay, and oh, then you have Roman Reigns who's leading SmackDown. No, no, like, no, 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 no. I disagree with you here. This has come back to the. Uh, this has come back to what I said about the whole. What should be some segments should be for kids. Some segments. Should, well, I think this Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin thing. If I was nine or ten, I'd be all over it. Oh, it'd be amazing, yeah. And I think that's what this feud is for. So I don't think exactly. you can. Control. Yeah, but that dog costume barking thing. No, not even kids it. found that entertaining. You should see the yes, kids in the audience yes. groaning at the fucker. My nephew wanted that's to get a dog costume. I think the little kids love it. I think that feud is about And apparently Vince McMahon was laughing his ass off about the segment. So. But he's always laughing his ass off because he's trolling everyone. Yeah. Um, he knows. But no, but no, I don't think we can complain about that particular this particular feud. I think it's for kids. I think we can complain about other things that are meant to be for our age and fail, but I think we know that this one's going for the younger generation. It's the superhero. Yeah. Can I just say movie. one thing about the characters? Okay, so the problem with characters is, is uh, when someone gets over, when WWE gives them the opportunity, like the man, Becky Lynch character, uh, they give fans what fans want in that you know certain scenario. And then they're pushing uh, uh, pushing that scenario so down our throats that we get sick of that character. Because Vince is probably like, oh, okay, we're going to give you one character that you guys want, but we're going to push that character so we get sick of it. And that's exactly what happened with Rollins and with Backlash. I don't think anyone ever really loves the feelings of the play. Not really. Uh, to he be honest, talk. he was actually cheered uh, last, uh, not last week, uh, last year. Oh, last year, you know? yeah, he was cheered last year, but... Even then, he wasn't that over. Yeah, but what I'm trying to say is they're pushing characters so much if we want something. This, the main character, is still. Everyone is still. Yeah. Apart from Rick, my boy Ricochet. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, I love Ricochet. Um, my issue is, my internal issue is with, with, I think, you know, it comes down to... Um, you know, I think we, I think as wrestling fans, and I'm going to disagree with you both here, because you guys, I think as well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to also put it like, say if I like, I'm, I'm a big fan of this Roman Reigns. Not for the I like movie. Roman Reigns right now. Yeah, I'm enjoying yeah, Roman Reigns. I like, I like, I like the dog stream, I like that too. Because it shows that they're willing to try and cater to different audiences and different, which is what you get on comedy for. If you get a comedy show with different comedians, some of them will be for kids, some of them will be for art, more adult people. Yeah. And I think that's fine. I think you're allowed to write it. But I think the one, like thing, wrestling fans, one thing that wrestling fans do, they go, well, this is shit because of this. Well, it's not for you. Get the grip. If, if, a guy yeah. comes, if a guy is coming out in a dog costume, you know that's not for you as a 17-year-old man. This, the one thing you should be thinking about is the Lana storyline, which is clearly catered towards you, because yeah. that is actually crap, because they're aiming for your age and they're not hitting it. Yeah. That's, that's can, I, can I just say something about Reigns and Rollins? Oh. I actually have a conspiracy about Reigns and Rollins, and that's that Vince... Now, this is we're talking about Vince McMahon. This guy can do whatever he wants, okay? So it wouldn't surprise me if this is the case. That Vince decided to put Rollins at the top, so we get sick of Rollins, and we forget what happened to Reigns, and then he pushes Reigns. Uh, yeah, that's true. Reigns is getting a massive push next year to a big Mania match. Yeah, so he made Rollins, uh, so he made, he made people boo Rollins. Yeah. Just to bring Roman Reigns back, so because he thinks that fans are gonna cheer for Reigns. No, 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 that's not conspiracy theory. I that's think true. <laughs> He wouldn't, he wouldn't try and get them to boo Rollins. Well, he's successfully done that. 
I wouldn't uh, be surprised that he was pushing Rollins so hard because of the rings. I wouldn't be surprised. Has Vince done that or has Seth Rollins done that? If you want to Seth be Rollins honest, is a loser, okay? Seth Rollins doesn't have control on what he says, so Vince has uh, done that. But no, the guy's a heel, he's okay? But he's not, he's a baby face. Dude, the guy showed up in Chicago with the gear saying, uh, having a number 23. So you, you're not going to say he's Michael Jordan of WWE. He's literally saying that to us. The guy's a heel. But he, unfortunately, as actual proper terms, he's still technically a WWE baby face. Yeah, because he, he is ridiculous, dude. He goes on Twitter and he says that he's the best wrestler in the WWE. I can name five wrestlers that are better than him. He's not even the best on his brand. I'm You're talking about Ricochet. Look at Ricochet, dude. On that list. Yeah, look at Ricochet. Look at Adam Cole. Look at AJ Styles. You're going to say uh, uh, Seth Rollins is better? Fuck no way. No. It's not even in the top oh. ten. No. So it's ridiculous. Seth Rollins isn't that good. He's the best wrestler to ever wrestle in the history. No. Um, the championship probably. All right, yeah, let's talk about the championships that you want to discuss. Yeah. So, I don't like the fact that both the champions are unbeatable monsters. Mm. Okay, yeah, I get that. I think it makes yeah. it boring. I think that makes it a lack of variety. And, you know, I, I think the issue is, is that, you've, especially when you do, a, you know, especially on those dual pay-per-views, are you going to see two squash matches for the main belts every night? Like, you did... Because you, you've got to get workarounds for Rey Mysterio to go to get Brock Lesnar. And, like, that only reason that was a no-disqualification match of Dominic. That was cool, but you can't do that trick all the time. No. Um, and, like, that's the issue here. You can't... You can't keep making these, uh... These particular, um... Things. And I, I really like the... Thing wrong but i always thought it was wrong that he got the belt i prefer, you know no i think the that... thing needed the belt but, but lesnar didn't need to win the ah. wwe title well you see i think the thing didn't need the belt if if he had lost against seth rollins again fuck me the crowd would have gone insane he he shouldn't have even feud with seth rollins he why did he even feud with seth rollins and they already screwed up the fiend because he should have won the title of hell in a cell yeah, I agree with that one. They did. It, it, it's a Goldberg situation again, though. Goldberg lost to Triple H in the Elimination Chamber, and then they threw him the belt the next month because people got pissed off. That's literally all that happened again. Is they didn't pull the trigger when they actually had the perfect opportunity to pull the trigger. And the crazy thing is, they knew that everyone going into Hell in a Cell is going to be hyped up for Bray winning. They knew that. Yeah. And Vince probably says, Vince probably said, oh, fuck you guys, I'm going to do what I want to do. And he was la he was sitting in the back laughing his ass off. Yeah. You know? It's a sad reality. The reality is sad, yes. Also, can we talk about the belt designs? Yep. Because they're fucking shit. Why like do the... four of your belts have a giant pissing W on it? They are so unimaginative designs of belts. It is not even funny. I mean, I, mean, I like I like the blue belt. Oh yeah, the blue universal championship looks nice, but the <sighs> other world title doesn't need to be the same Tra belt, but with a black strap. The women's Guys, titles I'm, don't uh, need to be the same one, but one has a bloody red bit on it, I'm, one has a blue bit on gonna, it. Uh, I'm going to disagree. Be, I'm going to disagree. Can be controversial. I like the new Intercontinental Championship. Oh, I love the new Intercontinental Championship. I, I, I it's like the new fresh, it's nice design, and it's n different. Yes, I agree. But I have one thing that I know both of you will disagree with me. Uh, and I try to like this title. I just don't. I think. I don't like this Universal title. Blue color. I don't like it. Like, I think they should they should have just went with the World, World Heavyweight Championship with the big gold big gold belt that we had back then. I today. think they should have just gone with Bray Wyatt's custom design that he showed off on I'm, Twitter. I, I think I, I think they should do more titles like Christian War is more, more match, and uh, you know I don't think Bray will ever get rid of him. My He's issue is that it looks like a toy. They all look like toys. That's the problem. Yeah, but, 
That's what they're meant to look like. Yeah. That's kind of the mark point of it. Like the women's tag belts look nice, but we never see them. Like, yeah, yeah, I agree. But then we have the twenty four seven pout, which just looks like a child did it in Microsoft Paint. I love that yeah. Microsoft Paint. It's still relevant in twenty nineteen, I tell you. Yeah, speaking of titles, do you guys want to bet that in a year or two from now, or whenever it happens, that there is going to be a point where Undisputed is on the main roster and Adam Cole is going to become double champion and they're going to bring back Undisputed title? Mm, no. No. But then again, I'm not yeah, I don't agree with that either. I, I, but a lot of people were saying that, like, it's a perfect opportunity for them to bring back the title and that kind of stuff. So we haven't got on, we uh, haven't got enough decent matches going on as it is, and if you haven't got two titles, it's just to make shit even worse. Yeah, yeah you have a brand split. Exactly. It two make... is as well. Hmm? This might be. This might be. Oh. Oh, we lost Alex. Oh shit. Alex. Man, yeah. we shouldn't. Uh, okay, back. you're back. Okay. Um, I was uh, saying, I'm totally controversial, but I'm not the biggest Adam Cole fan. I think he's overrated. What? Hmm. You're talking what to the mark say? of Adam Cole right here in Stefan. So I'm, not, I'm con- not Adam Cole, Mark. As a matter of yeah, fact, I like Matt Riddle more. I'm not that I'm cool fan. I just think I met the guy personally, and I know. Uh, okay, I'm, I respect the guy, and I like I like my real more than I'm cool. Just to... shut the fuck up. I like my real more. Uh, but, dude, I don't know how can you not like Adam Cole and Adam Cole there. They're boring. They've been around too long. They definitely do have their negative sides, but they do have a lot of Adam positive Cole's sides. The worst member by far, so there you go. Yeah, I agree that there are some things that they should, they should change. And like I said, the guy who what should take title off Adam Cole is Matt Riddle. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but have we finished the belt discussion, or do we have any more yeah. to say on it? Well, we are, you guys, yeah. you know, what do you guys think about the squash? The, like, my opinion on them. Monster, you know, heels and stuff. It worked for some heels with the squash matches. I don't like it. Uh, you but know, it, it, it d- but it does need to be an actual Every wrestler week. as well. Yeah, they, it, it needs to be a jobber. It, yeah, it doesn't work when they're just bringing random people because the win doesn't mean anything unless if they put Mojo Rawley in there to get beat up by one of them, it would mean more than if they were just losing. Yeah, they were just my issue is that. Person. Yeah. Bro, my issue with that is they're doing that a month, two months. They're not doing that one week. Then do, they're doing that once and then every other week, the same thing, just questioning people. That same the same thing happened with Bronze Roma. Same thing happened with Nia Jax. Yeah. yeah. But Nia Jax isn't like most girls. Yeah. And same thing is going to happen with Kate Lee. Don't worry, guys. It's coming. Mm. But yeah, uh, yeah. Now, Nia Jax isn't like most girls. Yeah, there's a reason for that. Cause she's not very talented like most girls. She's bored. I disagree. Nia, Nia's good. No, no, no she's not. That's she's a, a dangerous hard. worker and not that good. Oh shit! I come on, Tom, dude. Sasha Bank, uh, Banks is fragile, dude. She she gets injured every time she gets punched in the face, man. Mm. Be real for a second. I like I, mean, I like I, mean, I like Sasha. Not but... cult, so... What? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Nothing, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's move on. Uh, Jordan Miles. Well, oh, where is that you. guy? He's go. got. Looks like he got his release from WWE. Which, good, fuck off. You mean, yeah, I, 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 I understand where he's coming from. He's handled it in the complete wrong way. Completely wrong way. But the problem is, his controversy sparks from something that he agreed to in the first place. The t-shirt yeah, design was approved by him. It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because it WWE is. shouldn't, 
shouldn't have uh, like thought of it in the first place, but the fact that he's okay it doesn't give him the right to complain. Um, but yeah, but to be it, fair, it's just trying to compare something to that was not even the design. I could draw an apple with a slit in it, and someone will think it's a vagina, but it's a fucking apple. Yeah. It, at this point, he was looking for something to complain about to get to get fired and leave WWE. It's very obvious he just wanted to leave, and he found an excuse to do it. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not going to disagree with you um, as such. I, I don't think you're completely wrong. I don't think you're completely right either. Um, I, I don't think it's all his fault. I think WWE should take some blame. Um, because the fact that that got passed I don't see anything wrong with it. It was literally a black t-shirt with his name in it. I mean, yes, you can compare it to something that was a racist depiction, but then you're just trying to see something that wasn't there in the first place. Yeah, but WWE should know better. It's not even get themselves like that's the issue. That's... Mm. Um, but like, no, the John Miles thing. I think the fact that you put people like Jay Lethal into it is fucking ridiculous. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, I don't think he's completely wrong. I don't think WWE's completely right. This is literally a situation where it's not black and white. I don't think either of the sides have done a good job. Um, and I think, you know, because we can say that, yeah, it wasn't a thing. But the fact they thought of this design is ridiculous. Um, I know fact- there are people that think like you, Tom, that it's like, you know, it, it looks like that, but it obviously isn't. But, you know, if... But it's if a guy, ridiculous that he, he okayed it. Yeah, yeah, I'm not saying Jordan Mars is completely innocent. I think it's a, I think it's a difficult thing. I, I, don't, I don't think it helped his situation when he said, I'm, I'm leaving because of what you've done to my br- brothers. Don't call me by my slave name. <laughs> yeah. My he, issue with him no, is he that literally he's brought slavery into it for no goddamn reason. My he, issue he, is that he's mentioning other people. He's going to get others in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that he went, like, don't mention my slave name, like... To be honest, he um, sounds racist as well. Like, he, he, for some reason, he wants to bring racism into it when there potentially I wasn't think, then any there. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're not going to go into the... We're not going to speculate about how, what he's... No. I, I mean, obviously, WWE I mean, doesn't have the greatest track record of treating black wrestlers, a.k.a. I mean, I, Booker I, T carry my bags. But he was King Booker. Yeah, I mean, uh, and before anyone wants yeah. to bring up the Booker T, no one like you should win the championship, the comment was referring to the fact he was a criminal, not due to the fact he was black. So people it, made a problem it, out there where there wasn't actually any. But it, but it was poor, wasn't it? it oh, wasn't it was in poor was taste, poor. don't get me wrong. Uh, but because it wasn't... Obviously, if you, yeah, but if you don't know Booker's a criminal, what are you going to think? But no, they did all the promos regarding his criminal past before that comment was made. So they set up for that yeah. comment. Um, yeah, but you're still gonna think, oh, hang on, does that have a bit of meaning? You know? Yes, um, I know. I know it was in poor taste. Just I, I know. I think the the line is abhorrent. I, I don't like. You're gonna put yourself in the corner if you do that. Line. I don't. But it gener- can... generated a lot of debate. They sold a few WrestleManias regarding that, but yeah, it probably would have worked if Booker T had won the pissing title. Yeah, I mean we're not gonna get into that now. You put that some other time. I was hoping on the Jordan Miles situation because you haven't said that. Like, yeah, about uh, it's just a ridiculous situation. Is Stefan still with it? Yeah. I just think Jordan Miles, fuck about? off. Just, just he's left the company. Back off now. Yeah, I no mean, need to mention it again. Him. The situation is over. No need to Dude, keep dragging don't it. Don't even give him a tantrum anymore, okay? We were talking about him last week, and now I gave his opinion, which I agree definitely, and I just I'm don't gonna... want to mention the guy anymore, you know? I'm going to stay mutual because obviously we don't know all the information. So exactly, so I, I can't yeah. say who was in the right and who was in the wrong. But let, let's yeah. move on to a situation where someone was definitely in the wrong. I don't know which one there is because there's two situations. <laughs> um. <sighs> Jim Cornette. Oh, here we go. Oh my God! Uh, speaking of controversy. Okay. First so, off, he defended this line by saying it was not a racist joke; it was a starvation joke. 
It doesn't make it any fucking better. <laughs> my it makes it feel worse. worse. But it doesn't make is, the fucking joke better. My issue is, my issue is, is that the fact he didn't own up to it and go, my bad. He tried to defend himself. Now, now, let's just give you context, guys. The line he said was both, well, both racist and a starvation joke. He said, Trevor Murdoch is the only person that could get away with riding around Ethiopia with a bucket of fried chicken on his back. So, a racist joke and a starvation joke. Good job there, Jim Cornette. The issue as well is that he's obviously got a lot of history with this. Um, but, you know, he's been doing it. I don't know why he got employed, because I remember back in, I don't want to mention this up, but a little company called WCPW. Um, when it, it was Adam Rampage versus Rampage. I don't think you've actually seen the footage for this one. I'm sure where that was. Uh, but, I would have been there, love, yeah. Nah, he's talking about Adam Blobby. He's only one, he, I bet he likes kissing men. It's like, and I then... Oh, uh, yeah, didn't someone on commentary just say, is there anything wrong with that? It was JR. JR was like, there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's just yeah, like, he is a very oh, controversial what's... person. Now, down to the Didn't... joke. It was clearly Didn't... in poor taste. No, I, yeah. There's no defending him here. This is, he knows better. Guys, yeah. guys, can we I'm just not, agree? Not... Can we agree that people are too fucking sensitive right now? Oh, I no. would completely say, uh, yeah. uh, with a lot of stuff, people are sensitive. This yeah. and the other yeah. is, but is not. I can't condemn the guy that much because, to be fair, I've made a lot worse jokes than that. Yeah, but you haven't made it live on TV. No, I, I personally avoid saying controversial jokes when there's a camera on me. And also, right, end of way power. It's not for like. It's not like a TV footy. This is for kids. And, kids and it was like, and it was pre-recorded. Why the hell did it make it through the editing room? Yeah, that's another issue in itself. That's another issue in itself. But the issue is as maybe well, probably isn't... maybe they didn't get the joke. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. They 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 were just careless. I don't, I, Stefan. I, if, if you do, if you think this is just one of those things that's a bit sensitive, I do disagree with you. I think this was an abhorrent joke. I think generally a lot of people are too sensitive these days. Um, but I think this time that's too far. Because... I. I could not tell you. I haven't really decided my opinion on whether he went too far or not. So I'm just going to uh, leave any personal opinion regarding my what opinion he said is, out. My opinion is that I wouldn't defend him and he shouldn't be defended. Okay. But he knew that he's on the camera. He knew that he's on, on the show. It was his decision to say. Okay. So he is the one guilty. Now, are people sensitive? Yeah, I honestly think people are, people are pussies these days, especially in 2019. Because whatever you say, you're going to end up guilty. Whatever you do, you're going to end up guilty, you know, for little things. And now, that is obviously a racial stuff, whatever he said, but it's his fault. And I can't defend it. He knew what he... He should have known what he's going to get himself into. Mm-hmm. Yeah, credit. Credit. Yeah, credit to you, mate. Um, can we talk about somewhere where there's no doubt that this this, uh, this piece of let, shit's in the Let's league. just, well, one more thing I want to do want to say about Jim Cornette. He also called Justin Roberts a paedophile. Which is wrong. Very wrong. Well, so, I'll, I'll be honest. That is a joke know. I will not defend. I won't defend the joke about the bucket of chicken. <laughs> I'm not defending him, but... No, but... No, but you need to look like, although yeah, we can say that it's, it's, it's temporary. No, you know, it's it's like, you know, with the times these days, everyone's too sensitive. No, this but is just Jim Cornette saying really you, shitty things. You cannot make a racial joke and go too sensitive. Because it wasn't in a funny taste. It was, he, he was like, you know, yes, the joke was there. But the joke was to laugh at the black person laughing with the black person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is the issue. It's where yeah. the joke comes from. Yeah. If, say, for example, a black comedian made a black joke, you would be able to laugh because he's not making the black people, he's laughing with black people and others. But that was just offence to black. There is a difference between a good joke and a bad joke. And I get that most people in 2019 don't understand the fucking difference. But this time, you can't defend this because he wasn't laughing with them, he was laughing it yeah. just, this just uh, is controversial. I just have one more thing to say about Grenade before we uh, go to the next topic. And I know you guys are going to agree with me on this. 
This guy is a crazy motherfucker, okay. Uh, he doesn't give a fuck what he's saying. And it's not the first time that he was in the controversial discussion and that kind of stuff, so I'm not surprised. He's literally in the controversial you discussion know. every pissing week. Yeah, yeah. He's just one person like Billy Graham that just needs to step off social media and stop saying shit. I mean, like the guy, the, hey, guy wanted to kill Vince Russo, okay? What does it say about can, him? Can like, you blame him, though? I mean, Dude, he Russo. went on a video and said he wanted to kill him, okay? So that's the same guy who said this joke on live TV. It doesn't surprise me. No. Okay, let's just quickly rattle on a couple of bits of news before we have to recover to talk about more controversial things. I have a couple more controversial things. Ben, Cal ben Cal Valquez is still working at the Performance Center and he's going to be performing at the next event in Mexico. You mean Cain Velasquez? Yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> What did you call him? I don't know. I'm tired. Leave me alone. But yeah, he's uh, at the Performance Center. No, he's really good. I'm annoyed that they brought him in just to get beat by Brock Lesnar. And to do it in a shitty fake MMA fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think... Because Kane's really good. Like, he's actually quite good from what I've seen. And like, because I've seen some of the other stuff outside of WWE. He's quite good. I've heard to just go, no, Eminem, Eminem, Eminem. MMA, and for him to go, nah, sorry mate, see ya. Oh, yeah. Come on. You know, like, it's frustrating. Hmm. Alright, now let's move on to the next controversy. I love how you went, there's a few topics to talk about, and we talked about one. Yeah, <laughs> it's just kind of, we've got two big ones in a row, so I kind of want to break it up with the next story after this one. Okay. Uh, Ring of Honor is in the controversy. Ooh! Because their women's champion Kelly Klein, I don't, I don't sure. know, don't know. Sure. Uh, has it. essentially been fired by Ring of Honor while recovering from a concussion. Ooh. Uh, according to Ring of Honor themselves, they have uh, notified her that they will not be re-signing her contract when it expires at the end of the year, which essentially is firing somebody. They have essentially just fired her while she is out on injury. It doesn't make him look good, does it? No. I that... have only one thing to say about Ar Arridge. Uh, Arridge had a great run, okay. And who was there? Owens, a lot of people. Bay uh, Black, Dollar Black, Adam Cole, now Jay Little, he is left there. Uh, Arridge is dead, dude. With Marty Skrull living, Arridge is dead. There well, is with no with this Irish. latest controversy, they're really not helping themselves. And as Marty Skulls, is he left, is he? Yep. His country has ended. Oh, They've so not got any real surefire talents right now. Yeah. yeah to be no, fair, yeah. Impact yeah. Wrestling yeah. is yeah. going for their yeah. spot. The only man who's got, got potential is Joe Henry, but, you know... Ring of Honor will be Bro, dead before they can do anything with they it. Don't, they don't have people. They don't have 200 people on the show. Watch Okay, in the uh, arena, mm. in the building, whatever. So, the five is putting better numbers. Probably. Actually, it's not sad. Fuck him. So yeah, I, I Impact will replace Ring of Honor as uh, America's second, uh, third biggest wrestling brand. I, it, it always do was. We, do we see Skull coming to uh, AEW? Uh, yeah, I'd say. But obviously, it's always been a battle for third place. Now we AEW came between Ring of Honor and Impact. There's always kind of been a competition yeah. between those two to who's the other biggest brand in America. But Ring of Honor's dropping and Impact's raising, especially when they've got Tessa Blanchard and talent like that in Impact. Ooh, isn't she leaving? Good... Isn't wait? Isn't Tessa leaving? Also? No, she's resigned well, the contract. Good... Okay, okay. She's okay, re-signed the contract and yeah. confirmed that she's staying with Impact Wrestling. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see her in the anywhere. NXT with. She should be amazing in NXT, AEW, anywhere. The woman's very, very talented, and WWE was stupid for not picking her up when they had the chance. Same with AEW. Did we get that opportunity? Who knows? But yeah, just Ring of Honor. You don't look good right now. Yeah. No. no. I don't know who is even on their exclusive roster. 
Odds between Jay, Le Jay Lethal. Uh, yeah. Fair play. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, I think there's an issue internally. Mm. Definitely, there is definitely something going on in the management. Joey uh, Joey Mercury left as well, didn't he, due to controversial stuff sent by... Fired. He got fired. For something, yeah. I, I'd never really read into the controversy. I think, yeah. yeah, I think he just got fired, my friend. There is for fire, there was firing. Some, there was loads of leaked emails and stuff like that, and God knows what happened there. I never really looked into it. But let's move on to our last uh, non-controversial uh, thing. Well, kind of. Uh, Cody Rhodes has trademarked Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> Bash at the beach. Slamboree cool. and Super Brawl. Interesting. So now he owns the. Uh, currently, he owns the trademarks to definitely Bash at the Beach and uh, Dusty Rhodes. There's no word on whether he's got approved for Slamboree and Super Brawl. But WWE let Bash at the Beach uh, pay per view name expire as a trademark. Which basically means Vince is going to go and look at every WCW name they have and then trademark them all again. How fun. Yeah, but to be fair, I like the idea that... He, well, I'm glad he's got Dusty Rhodes. Because mm -hmm. the fact he couldn't say his dad's name on TV was ridiculous. I agree. Well, he, can he say that he is Cody Rhodes or no? Uh, he says he can. But he doesn't. No, apparently he's bef he, he more prefers to be the American Nightmare. Cody. Yeah, because he he probably you know since he's working backstage, he's probably trying to uh, separate the character from uh, reality. So yeah, and just to confirm, all these names he's trademarked are not AEW trademarks. They are Cody Rhodes's do trademarks. So AEW okay. do not have the do not have them on there. System so as their trade. How can WWE sue them? Sue them, right? And then no, I mean uh, think, WWE. Think. Because I thought WWE owned Cody Rhodes' last name. Um, they apparently they did, but I think he must have got it back. Maybe. Yeah. I don't actually fully know, but he owns Dusty Rhodes though, so that's good. But I think WWE just they're like bitches sometimes. Oh yeah, they definitely are. They're both. Petty, and I think, you know, I mean, trademarks to me don't really matter that much. It's not, like, you know, but I think the fact that they were like, you're not having Cody Rhodes, like, what does, like, although, you know, you can say the same thing about the whole Cody story, what difference does it make to their product that he can't have Cody Rhodes? No. Exactly. It's, it's part of his family legacy to have the last name Rhodes, so I feel like it was just a dick move on to be Debris' part to not let him have it in the first place. Like, Dude, that's really like the really biggest really dick move ever. To be real, with you. You say that, yeah, but they trademarked it. You are not to bring someone to Cody Rhodes. So they should just fun. let have let him have it. That's probably. It's not but like you know, it's not like he's trying to take the term WrestleMania or anything, is it? We don't have great <laughs> mind Teddy McMahon, then. We do. But let's move on to our biggest controversy of the week. Let's start this by saying fuck Corey Graves, fuck you Corey Graves, fuck you. I agree. Corey Graves has bullied Mauro Ranallo on Twitter for his com commentary at War Games enough so Mauro Ranallo disabled his Twitter account. Mm -hmm. I agree. And what takes the piss is WWE's response to this crap by saying on Survivor Series that he blew his voice out. Bullshit. I know it's bullshit. Absolute bullshit. bullshit. Also, fuck you, Corey. I'll say it again. Corey Graves, right? He's very, very good at his job, but fuck it. He's and I don't, I don't even, I use that word lightly, but the issue is, it's like, he didn't have to do it. Why are you making fun of someone with depression? It's not cool. And, like, if you want to talk tomorrow about his skills, do it in person, my friend. I don't know. This guy is controversial 
uh, his podcast is shit, okay? That he has on YouTube. The guy is piece of shit, okay? And uh, he probably thinks that he is the man when it comes that he is great, whatever. And he is good. He is not great like he was two years, three years ago. Uh, but seriously, for you to go at Mauro Ronaldo and to say some things like that to him and uh, with uh, to a guy who is dealing with uh, problems with mental whatever he's dealing with, I don't know what what he's dealing with, but like I, I don't respect Corey Graves. That's the thing. I don't I don't think uh, he should have went that way. You know, it's just dis- disrespectful to a guy who is basically the best commentator in the business right now, in my opinion. Mate. Mate, would dream Percy Watson exists. Good old Percy, showtime. Um, but no, I think Corey Graves, you know, why is why? I, what was his reason? And you, well, the issue is he has a go at the people, like, oh, this is just a more random Corey Graves, we'll get back to the moment. But, like, he has a go at the fans that have a bunch of Funko Pop toys. They pay your fucking wages, mate. So I would stop having a go people like those who are just fans of what you do stop having a go at them start to go at people with depression it's not cool to go on twitter and go oh i wish i could hear the hall of fame and full ring on our channel because if they want to speak they will speak mara is the main commentator and he's probably getting direction in his ear just like you do every single fucking week because if you didn't have those directions you'd be screwed as mara and has a bit of talent that you fucking don't have I, it baffles me that he can go, why doesn't Mara shut up when he knows yeah. how direct he is. It baffles me that you think you are even an inch on how good that man is and how much he's gone through. You absolute shitty person and a human being. You do not Everything deserve... you said, I agree. I completely Everything. agree. But let's continue Every with fucking thing. one more incident of Corey Gray's being an absolute scumbag. Someone put, thought, to put their thoughts on Baron Corbin and Corey Graves on Twitter, on a video, and his response is, you're a grown woman making internet videos in an empty bed next to a stuffed action figure, we win. Yeah, Are you that's just a fucking arsehole, or what? Mm. He's yes, a jerk. Is, He's he, clearly he, a person he, that can't take thinks, any form of criticism. You know what? He thinks more highly of himself that he really is good. He He's really not as good like he does. thinks. Yeah. And I, I was happy to hear that he was retiring off freaking commentary. Yes, he's a good commentator, but he's an absolute arsehole of a person. And I generally also think Marin. I really hope Marinello is doing very well because the man deals with a lot of mental illness, and I do hope he's well. Yeah, me too, man. And as we all know, dealing with a mental illness is not a very nice thing to deal with, especially when it's bipolar as well as... I think he has another one as well, doesn't he? I know he definitely has bipolar. Depression, that's it. De- de- bipolar and depression. Dude, dude, I was dealing, I'm, I'm dealing with anxiety my whole life, okay? So, I can't even imagine what this guy is going through because this is something 100, 100 times worse, okay? You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't know what this guy is thinking, and that's my I fear. Exactly, I get exactly what you mean as well. And the issue is, right, is I know... That we're in the social media age and that you know you wouldn't get yourself out yeah. there but if you had a problem with Mauro Ronaldo go up to him and speak to him about it rather than with someone who has depression and bipolar say to the entire world that you dislike their commentary and it wasn't even in like a constructive way you're just being an asshole jerk way dude you know, you're using like, like asshole to the people that fucking pet as you said that woman that made the video she pays his fucking wages yeah she like, not directly, obviously. She is the one who buys the figures, who watches the show. If she, if people like her didn't do that, you wouldn't be anywhere, mate. You'd be fucking You're basically... Stuck. You're Probably basically... Soft. You know, with a bad neck. And I don't want to say that on you, but it's true. If you didn't go to WWE because WWE wasn't successful, you probably have bad injuries. And, you know, you're probably in a much better place now as a commentator. So shut up, enjoy it. You, and maybe you're insulting your it. customers, you fucking idiot. He is, and it's annoying. It's annoying. It's really annoying. It's frustrating. And I'll also yeah. like to mention, if you're going to insult your customers, do it so they can't hear you. <laughs> like I, I do. Like he's not even smart, you know? It's... No. His commentary is nowhere near as entertaining as it used to be. He's just yeah. shown over and over again that he's a trash human being. And I hope you hear this, Corey. 
because you are a scumbag for bullying a mentally uh, me person who has mental health problems. That makes you a scum person. Yeah, especially when that fucking person has more talent in their little finger than you have in your you. entire body, <laughs> just because you couldn't yeah. make it as a wrestler and had to become a subpar commentator. Someone is gonna trust me. Someone is gonna hear this. You guys don't need to believe me. I know this podcast is not the biggest that we have. Like we don't have a lot of people. I mean, we have few people, watch, but they're listening from WWE. They know. I'm telling you, they know. They hear. Every, they hear some stuff. Okay. It's just that I know for a fact that I have friends who also have like, for example, one of my friends, they stole, they literally stole, you know Cesaro when he's coming out of the Bond? Yeah. So I don't know if you guys know Joe Cronin, he has like a 40,000 subscribers. And they literally stole that idea from him uh, for Cesaro to come out of the Bond. So I know people in the community, YouTubers who uh, WB is literally listening. And they don't want to admit that. If you ask someone, uh, you know, uh, do listen to fans, they're gonna say no. But they are listening because, you know, they know they know stuff, dude. It's not that they don't know. They just pretend. Yeah. And the worst thing is, with this whole Mario Ronaldo situation, that they said that about his voice. That's a bullshit on their way. And some they someone needs to call them out for that. That's ridiculous. That they actually it's the same said JBL that his did way as well. Yeah. I don't know what to say about this because I think I've said it all. Really. I, th I think we've covered everything. I've insulted him as enough as I can. Just yeah, I think lost all respect for the man. Yeah. Uh, what? I have what? a news about. Did you guys hear that Vince wants Shane Basil and Raw? Oh fucking no! Please no. Yeah, and, uh, okay, so there is actually four great news from this week. Mm -hmm. One of those news is that Rare Ripley, that Vince wants Rare Ripley on the main roster, which I'm rolling my eyes on that. Second thing is that Vince wants Shayna Baszler on Raw and SmackDown. Third thing is that Vince wants Adam Cole at WrestleMania, and fourth thing is that Vince wants Kate Lee at Raw Rumble. So, I don't know if you guys see that happening but if I you type see, in I and can definitely see Keith Lee appearing in the Royal Rumble because Vince yeah, was I very think impressed with the he guy. should be he should be like uh he in my opinion Keith Lee should win Royal Rumble and face Brock Lesnar I would love to see that match yeah. I don't know about you guys but Keith Lee is and... very very athletic especially for his size he's got a good personality he's got a good character he's just he's got a good feel about him when he's there yeah um, and speaking of uh, speaking of Cole, uh, apparently Vince wants NXT title to be defended at WrestleMania. I don't know how you guys feel about that, if WrestleMania is a place for an NXT belt to be defended, but hey, take it as you want. We have a takeover the night before, so no. It's ridiculous, but I don't know. And how about, you I, know, I, I... we put the pissing cruiserweight on the t main show yeah. for once. But, oh, wait, Things that I'm not surprised at all. Thing that I'm not surprised is Rare Ripley that he's high on her, and you can just see it. You can just see the person, that, the people that he's high on, and uh, it's very easy to yeah. see. You definitely yeah. can. Now we're gonna have a good discussion for the weekly awards this week on what we think the best and worst things were this week. Now, guys, mm -hmm. let's discuss. Who guys, we guys, guys, we didn't even cover War Games in Survivor Series. We'll talk about it while we're doing these weekly shows. Yeah, okay, because that's the reason people are probably tuning in. Bear in mind, I haven't seen either War Games or Survivor Series in four or any of the weekly yeah. this week. So my What's... guess is just some clips I've seen, and, uh, you know, that's my intro. Well, you can still talk okay. about my best superstar and worst show and best show of the week. Absolutely. Uh, now, what do we think the best show of the week was? Ooh, uh, I think... Uh, oh, definitely NXT this week. In, You're not going to go with one of the pay-per-views? In wrestling or... Um, oh, pay-per-views. Yeah, just Pardon, Alex? No, is everything. Just, is it just going to be or can it be wrestling? Any... Wrestling in general. Yeah, so it can be the pay-per-views. Um, I'm going to... I might... Mm, I don't think... War Games can excite me as much as other takeovers. Survivor Series, I never liked the idea of Survivor Series. So I don't like the pay-per-views this week. Gone yeah. I, I think the best show was War Games. 
I don't like I... the map of the brand supremacy, because I'll forget about it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I, guys, I know <laughs> this is something people don't expect for me to say, but because I'm usually NXT Mark and that kind of stuff, but God damn it, I really like Survivor Series for whatever reason. Okay, Alex, what is your best show of the week? A-Dub. I'm going to, again, I don't want to, I'll probably lose, but I'm going to go with AEW. Uh, well, lose. No, you don't have anything to lose, bro. <laughs> this is not. We're just saying which, which who we are awarding the best show to. So your one counts as who you think the best one is. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah you're giving it AEW. <laughs> it was very close between giving it to War Games, Survivor Series, or AEW because AEW was very good this week. My, my only pitch for this, if we're allowed to pitch why we chose, is that okay. with Survivor Series and War Games, I could imagine myself getting bored watching the show. Whatever the fuck that's going to be horrible. I can be stuck wherever that is. Um, but, like, you know, I think watching you know, war games or Survivor Series, there's going to be a moment where it gets boring. But I think with anybody, it was two hours, it was concise, it's good fun. There wasn't really any boring moments, was it the best week for AW? No. But I think you cannot give something the best show overall if it has higher highs but lower lows, which I think is what the paper should add in war games with every AW. Yeah, I I can agree with that, but I'm going to go with war games. Alex wants AW, and Stefan goes for Survivor Series awards. Yeah. I think Survivor Series is probably right. contender of pay-per-view of the year. Yeah. What's next? Best match. Oh, I already shit. know who I'm giving this one uh, to. I'm going with war games. Matt's war games. I'm going with Shinsuke Nakamura versus Roderick Strong versus AJ Styles. Well, you see, it's fucked up, dude, when you said that because. <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, I have to cruise. Like, I said War Games, but then I hear about that match, and then. I don't want to be like a Mark, like you guys said, I'm a freaking Mark. Oh, actually, because I, don't, I already. I don't wanna, I'm going to go with Cole and Pidan. Yeah, it was a very, very impressive match. Just not just, because it's just so match. you know, just so you know, it's on the same level as War Games and uh, that Triple Threat match. I'm just uh, you, you guys. It's just it's very hard to you know say which one was better. So I think all of those matches were great. Yeah, they definitely were. What do you think was the best match of the week from any of the weekly shows? Well, one wasn't from one of the weekly shows or pay per view. What is it? I'm depressed. Mine was uh, R Truth versus Bo Dallas at WWE Live. Really? <laughs> no. Um, I, do you know what? I, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, Alex? Um, Ray Mysterio versus Brock Lesnar. Well, it was an entertaining match, I can't deny that one. It may have been overbooked, but I love that shit. So. No, it definitely weren't overbooked. It was the right amount of action and entertainment for what it was. It was one of the best Brock Lesnar matches we've seen in a while. Yeah. Hashtag bring in Dominic. Dominic? I, do you know what? I can see him being a star. You know? Oh, definitely. He's got, he's got a lot of potential. I just don't want him to do the whole turns heel on his dad thing. What? Yeah, it definitely wouldn't <laughs> work. Is that something you wouldn't believe in? <laughs> No. Just find, you could imagine at the end of the day you're going for a roast dinner or whatever they do. So, yeah. yeah. So I don't believe that. So. Yeah, I definitely can't wait to see what they do with mm -hmm. Dominic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, very good matches and definitely... Now we can move on to the best superstar of the week. Alex, would you like to go first? Sure, I, I told you this off there. I'm going with Rhea Ripley. She's had an incredible week. But obviously, she's impressed with the higher up. Um, yeah. Yeah, Ripley, I believe she pinned Charlotte on SmackDown. And, uh, uh, she did. Know, and then um, she you know, won the War Games match. And then she was the winner of the women's match of Survivor Series. What a week. I think she's a real star. Uh, you know, I think she needs a little more time in NXT. Just kind of iron everything out. Yeah, I, mean, I can agree. I can definitely agree she does need a bit more time in NXT, but 
She did have one hell of a week, so I can agree with that one. Who would I give it to? No, I'm going to give it to Kevin Owens. Really? Come on, that pop in War Games. He didn't do much. No, he didn't I don't much. care. If you're, Just be- wrestler, if you're giving a wrestler of the... That's a bit harsh. Other people did much better this week. Yeah. I want to give it to Kevin Owens. Congratulations. I'm going to give it to you because Kevin Owens... Yeah, I'm uh, uh, listen. I'm thinking, man, Trump or Adam Cole? Can I give? I, I can give to both. I'm gonna give it. To, I, I once again, I don't want to sound like a <laughs> mark, but I'm gonna give it to Adam Cole because the guy literally fell. I don't know from that steel cage. I don't know how he's walking. He defended the title next night. In my books, that's a big praise for me you know i think the guy deserves it yeah he does uh from woman i just want to uh mention rare ripley she's amazing yeah she so. definitely is she definitely yep. is but yeah uh now worst show of the week raw definitely raw smackdown oh yeah sorry i meant uh, smackdown smackdown was worse than raw i remember yeah smackdown at least on Roy you have Legendary by Skillet. Oh, yes. Uh, in my opinion, uh, did you guys say worst show or, or best? Worst show. Raw. Oh, I don't I, I actually... You see, it's so bad, I don't actually remember what's the worst. Uh, I Smackdown think maybe worse. Smackdown. Yeah, yeah, Smackdown. Yeah. See, we're all in unanimous decision that Smackdown was worse. Yeah, because I don't even remember what happened. I don't know if you guys remember, but I don't. Especially, I don't remember what happened. Rhea Ripley happened. won a match, and that's about all I remember. Oh, we had a yeah. shitty three, six-way tag for the ending. Yeah. Uh, worst match of the week. Um, I'm going to do it after versus Bo Dallas. That didn't we like. No! <laughs> I haven't seen any matches. Um, I can't uh, remember any matches. Worst match of the week. Adam I'm Cole gonna give. Ah oh, man, I don't, I don't know who. Nothing. You want to train? What? You want to train? I can hear like a lot of background noise. Like, no, I'm not on the train, dude. I'm with a goddamn. Uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah. I'm just. I'm just outside it right now because. I had to. I mean. You know, I had to go out for a walk, so I'm just... And we're finishing the podcast, so I think my match, I'm going to tell you guys, my worst match, in my opinion, was... Uh, was that, you know... Um, what happened? Uh, what's my, 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 my worst match of the week. I'm okay. actually going to do... I, if you want me to be serious for a second, I think okay. you have to. Give it to um, Balor and um, Balor and Matt Riddle, and I haven't seen many matches. It's still really good. It's been a good week for us. As every, Wait, almost, did you say? Good. Did you say worst match or best? Worst. worst. Oh fuck off! <laughs> no, I'm gonna what, give it to us. Listen, listen. listen why are, why are you fucking I'm around? Listen, 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 listen. Why are you fucking around with me when you know that I like Matt Riddle and Cole? You're doing that. You know what you're doing, dude. I didn't say Adam. <laughs> you said, I'm going to give it to the SmackDown main event, which I think was Roman Reigns and other people versus Baron oh, yeah. Corbin and other people. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah the I agree. Game, that's the best match of the week, unanimous. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm, I agree with that. One. Worst superstar yeah. of the week. Dakota Ooh. Kai, because she's a despicable heel. Uh, <laughs> um... <laughs> No, Dakota Kai turning heel is... Um, yes, I know I was being sarcastic. We can't give... We're turning on wrestling quality and stuff. Uh, Dana Brooke. <laughs> no, that's unfair. Come on, dude. Charlotte can right have it for being an arsehole to ask her. No, no I'm, going with I'm, I'm going with that. Um, Dominic. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Come on, man. Ask her for costume team SmackDown? No, Dominic. You mean Raw, right? She's Team Raw. 
Sorry, I get confused on what I yeah. just watch shit anymore. Uh, Ooh, yeah, I'm going to go with Asuka for her turn for her screwing over Team Raw on uh, Survivor Series. Fair enough. I can't yeah. think of anyone who was legitimately been bad this week, so I'm just going to put it in a kayfabe term. Like I said, I'm going with Dan Brook as the worst. Oh. Yeah, fuck Dan Brook. Yeah. Who are you saying is the worst, Alex? I told you. Dominic. He's not a superstar. Doesn't even no. technically work for the company. He will be. <laughs> Damn it, sorry, Dominic. Yeah, double deck. Uh, <coughs> overall, very good week of wrestling. I think I've got I've yep. got nothing else to talk about. No, we're done. We're done. Yeah, happy. We do Thank have you for this podcast. Thank yep. you for having me. It's been incredible. You're welcome. Right. Hopefully, we can come back someday. Uh, yeah, sure. Soon. Chat about more graps. Um, yes. Shooting shit, huh? <laughs> actually, I have a question. What? If you were to replace Adam Cole in the Undisputed Era with any wrestler, who would you choose? Heel from what? Balor. I've got mine. What, wait, why did you say I didn't hear you, sorry? Who would you replace oh, Adam Cole with in the Undisputed Era? Ooh, I don't know. I'd like to hear your opinion. I'd say it's Heel from Balor. I've got mine. Cool. It's Dominic. <laughs> I like the idea. <laughs> Dominic Mysterio joined the Undisputed Era. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it'd be, it would be entertaining if they did that. Hey, 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 the band of midgets. <laughs> the boogie man. Remember Adam Cole was the bunny and Adam Rose? Remember Adam Rose? Turns out Adam yeah. Cole was the bunny. That's Come on, guys. It. Let's be serious for a second. He's going to become Michael Cole's son in the main roster, so. <laughs> Mate. No, wait, hang on. Who? No, actually, I, to be fair, right? Mm. Who do you think who isn't getting pushed as the mega push from? Keith Lee's well, getting a mega push. Yeah, but who isn't getting one that you think needs one? Mm. Who isn't getting? Who's getting a mega push? Adam Cole or Rhea Ripley? Who's oh. not getting one? He said. Who's Ooh, not getting one? I think Matt made. Riddle. Matt Riddle. All of the, the basically ninety-five percent of the roster. Cesaro is the big one. Yeah, Cesaro's lost his appeal now. Yeah. No, this is too good. Put him down the next team, he'll improve. Yeah. I honestly think, I honestly think Matt Riddle needs to be pushed more, much more. Matt Riddle is NXT. NXT is the worst brand on on the entire WWE planet. Dude, a Matt Riddle, like Matt Riddle a should be. Listen to me. Listen to me. He should be NXT champion. Don't fuck around with me, okay? Yeah, he should. As long as Adam Cole Dominic Mysterio. Oh, him. fuck Adam Cole. Dude, he had his run, okay? 170 days, how much? I want to see Matt Riddle as a You know who okay? needs a push? Freaking Matt Hardy. Oh, yeah. I could fly. I don't know the words of it. Yeah. Uh, Matt Hardy hey, needs I... to return as the broken one no, to yeah. rival... <laughs> The, yeah, the Fiend, yes. Matt Hardy doesn't. Um, the Broken One was never a good gimmick. Bollocks. In, in WWE, in WWE. Yeah, because it was a Woken gimmick, not Broken. The Broken gimmick's amazing. Woken gimmick but was shit. But the Woken yeah. was wonderful, yeah. Yeah, but, but the annoying thing is, did you watch that Halloween special they did on the network? Yeah. That was, that was perfect, Matt Hardy. That yeah, shows how good he could have been in WWE. Hey, hey guys. But guys, they fucked guys, him up on TV. Guys. Yes. Close the podcast. Close the podcast. I gotta run, dude. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye, Stefan. Goodbye, hey, Alex. See you, see you on Raw. See you on Raw. See you in like four hours. Hopefully you guys are not dead by then. I'll be alive. I've got you know, to be. If, if you're alive, then, if you're alive by then, you're not gonna be alive, alive during Raw, so. No. I'll be alive I'll be asleep, so. <laughs> Have yeah. a nice sleep. <laughs> Thank you all for watching the podcast, and we shall catch you all okay. later. Bye bye.